I'm Kristen Swanson. I'm the professor of neurosurgery and vice chair of the Department of Neurosurgery uh, focused on research. Um, my other p title is I'm co-director of the Precision Neurotherapeutics Innovation Program, which is a collaboration between my lab, the Mathematical Neuro-Oncology Lab, and Bernard Bindock's lab, which is the Neurosurgical Innovation Lab. Uh, that's actually kind of a tough question. Um, I was always interested in math, uh, so I came from a, a very mathy background. Um, and my father, shortly before accepting graduate school, my father died of lung cancer. And uh, it was actually a month before I had to choose what program to go to. And uh, I felt fairly focused and very driven to do something that combined math with cancer. Um, unfortunately, after that, I've had two brothers that uh, have passed away from lung cancer. And so as a result, um, every day, what gets me out of bed in the morning is math and cancer and changing patients' lives as a function of that. My father, he very much taught me about uh, math very early in life, um, and so that he, he cultivated a love for mathematics and science. He was an engineer by training. Um, but in, uh, later in life, uh, when I started graduate school and then went on to a postdoctoral fellowship, so my, fel uh, my, fel uh, my uh, mentors were um, <laughs> somewhat like father figures um, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, one was a mathematician who wrote, literally wrote the book Mathematical Biology. So he thought we could bring quantitation to biology. Uh, he created the Center for Mathematical Biology at Oxford. Uh, his name was Jim, Jim Murray, is, is Jim Murray. Um, and uh, he had moved to Seattle, and that's how I chose my graduate program, was because I could go do something with math, plus the biology of cancer, um, under his tutelage. And he was an amazing mentor in that, in that regard. In addition, um, after that, my postdoctoral fellowship was, fo was focused more in specifically in neurocancers um, and uh, primary brain cancers, known as gliomas, and that person was uh, a neuropatho neuropathologist, uh, Buster Alvord, and he was a great mentor and friend of mine who had a very strong belief that there was a quantitative tool set that could be brought to understanding these very aggressive and horrible diseases. And my goal here um, is to really transform how we approach patients. Uh, how do we generate a patient-specific approach for each patient that optimizes their care? Based on my experience on the patient side of the, the table, when sitting next to my family members who have been struggling with this disease, um, it's really profound to me the importance of these individualized medicine approaches and how to optimize care for each patient. And so that's fundamentally what we do. Uh, so what I'm most excited about are all the projects that we have that are clinically translational in, in that sense. Not only have we developed the idea, but we've vetted the idea and the models work and they fit and they predict. And so now we're going to uh, deploy those as, as a function of multiple clinical trials um, for different cohorts of patients, some receiving surgeries, some receiving radiation therapy, some receiving combos thereof. So that's what I'm most excited about right now. One of the challenges in really all of clinical medicine is the whole concept of the average treatment for the average patient, and unfortunately, generally with average outcomes. Um, and we really want to turn that on its head. Um, and we get the opportunity to do that here at Mayo Clinic, uh, where you can think of each patient as an individual. The patient comes first. That's our rule system here at Mayo. And all we're doing is applying these mathematical models in the patient-specific way. Uh, and so that's exactly how we want to transform it, through clinical trials, uh, but not thinking of the average patient, but clinical trials focused focused on the individual patients and how we optimize for that individual patient using these uh, quantitative approaches we've developed. Uh, so the PNT lab, by, by definition, is a collaboration, right? It's uh, two co-directors. One's a neurosurgeon, one's trained as a mathematician, but I've spent my entire career in brain cancer, so somewhere in there, right? Um, so that's a diversity unto itself. Um, what's great about this, not only the lab conceptually, but also the lab design and really the lab um, um, ambiance, for no lack of a better word, is the fact that it's highly collaborative, right? We have people everywhere from software engineers to um, IT folks, right, that are very, very technical on that end, to bioengineers, and then neuroscientists and neurosurgeons and cancer biologists and mathematicians, you mix, you, and they're all mixed together in the space so that they have to collaborate. So we try and create a culture of collaboration where people want to meld together, and we've built a space that, that supports that concept. And so in that, con in, in that design, by placing um, our lab here at this location, we've, been, we've reached out to a, a wide swath of the clinical spectrum and research spectrum across the Mayo Clinic campuses, both here, Roch Rochester, and Jacksonville. Um, and so we work with radiology, neurosurgery, uh, radiation oncology, you name it. 
I don't know that there is a typical day, and I think that's what makes it so fantastic, right? Um, a typical day in the PNT lab could be anything from uh, walking in one day and I'm working with a postdoc that's got that's more on the quantitative end, and they've discovered some new technical in innovation that someday we'll get to the patient, but we're still working on that innovation side of things, and uh, you know some very specific computational focus will be the will it be the discussion, and then in the very next breath or the next day could be the next hour <laughs> could be the next minute uh, we could be looking at a device that we've designed to help enable delivering the mathematical modeling approaches that we we have developed into the clinic, and so that could be with augmented reality techniques like the HoloLens is a good example. How do you incorporate additional information into the surgical field for the, for the surgeons and that additional information would be one of our models. Uh, how do you add that into the field? You've got to display it somehow and so holography is one of the things that we're working on. Uh, so it, it really is all over the board. Um, the next day could be, the next moment could be in tumor board, uh, attending tumor board to learn about what, which patients are getting treated and how, and try and use that as a base in which we design how to um, uh, integrate our work into the, into the workflow of the clinic and how do you make sure that you're optimally integrating so that, so that you are day to day enhancing the lives of patients. First of all, I'm unbelievably grateful to be here. I think Mayo Clinic is an amazing place. Uh, and, and you hear that every day, you hear that from patients. I hear it all the time. I'm, I'm in the airport, I run into somebody and they'll see my little Mayo Clinic notebook or something. And they're like, oh, do you work there? Um, there? Everybody, you know, I think Mayo Clinic's name goes a long way. People recognize it, but I think when they experience it, um, it goes yet another <laughs> layer of, wow, okay, I get why people you know, have something to say about the, about this amazing institution. And on the research side, I can say that it's been unbelievably wonderful. Um, it's a great cultivated environment where that is so patient centric, right? And that's our ultimately our work. Our our work is so fundamentally about that individual patient. How do we best care for that patient? Not the average patient, but that patient right there. And our work melds so beautifully with that. And I, I just look forward to an exciting, wonderful future in which we can affect positive change in patients uh, by integrating our our, our approaches into to the Mayo Clinic culture.